If you've only ever heard of one tournament Scrabble player, it's probably Nigel Richards. Nigel attracts attention that no other player can match thanks to his worldwide dominance in English language Scrabble, or even more incredibly, his prowess in French language Scrabble, despite not speaking French at all. But there's another legendary Scrabble player from the US who won so many tournaments so overwhelmingly that his name is synonymous with Scrabble victory. That player is David Gibson. In his 33-year Scrabble career, Gibson competed in 120 tournaments, winning a staggering 73 of them. His wins include both of the two largest cash prizes ever awarded in competitive Scrabble, the Superstar Showdown and All-Stars Championships of 1995 and 2003, respectively. He also won the U.S. National Championships in 1994 and 2016. Gibson combined near-perfect word knowledge with a unique, highly defensive play style that opponents struggled to counter, and at the time of his passing in 2019, he had recently become the only player ever to achieve a 2200 rating in the modern era of the North American word list. In tournament Scrabble, when a player clinches victory before the final round, they're said to be Gibsonized a term inspired by how frequently Gibson accomplished that same feat. So, perhaps you're asking, did David Gibson ever play Nigel Richards? Did Scrabble's unstoppable force ever meet its immovable object? The answer is yes, but at only one tournament, the 2012 National Championship in Orlando, Florida, where they played all four of their four career games. It shouldn't be much of a spoiler when I tell you that the two legends finished first and second in the tournament, but how they got there is a story worthy of Scrabble history. Heading into the 2012 Nationals, Nigel Richards had won the previous two U.S. National Championships as well as the previous two World Championships, an incredible run of dominance that's never been duplicated. Although David hadn't competed at the national championship since 2008 when he finished third, his impeccable track record in big events made him arguably Nigel's top challenger. Nigel and David first squared off early on in the tournament in round 8 of the 31 round event, with Gibson coming out on top 496 to 386. Sadly, there's no record of the game other than the final score. So, let's fast forward to round 25, where David had vaulted into first place on the strength of an 11-game winning streak, while Nigel had also won 11 of his last 13 games to move up to second place. The two players took to the stage to battle on the top board. Both players played carefully in the early going, with David making several of his trademark defensive moves, including blocking Nigel's possible megabyte with a nice overlapping play. Six turns into the game, Nigel is up narrowly, facing what at first seems to be a relatively simple decision. David has just played the now expurgated Jew for a big score. From Nigel's point of view, David might be setting up the fourth and final S, especially given his penchant for defensive play, making any aggressive openings on his part especially suspicious but Nigel can't do much about it either way. Nigel holds the IN combination with the G of Gaviel open for ING bingos, and he has two simple spots available to dump his Y for a solid score and shoot for a bingo there. But instead of these more obvious moves, Nigel made a stunning play. OE in the lower right corner. The beauty of this move is that it sets up an enormous spot for Nigel's Y to score 50 points or better hooking Joey, with the guaranteed 54-point Yerd remaining on his rack. The other Y has already been played, so it's not a threat to be on David's rack. If David does indeed have the last S, he might be tempted to play something hooking Jews extending to the left after which Nigel will respond with at least a 50-point Y play, and potentially even more. If David doesn't have an S, he'll be hard-pressed to block effectively while also scoring a reasonable number of points. However, with this play, Nigel isn't completely giving up on an ING bingo either. 
Despite holding onto his weakest bingo tile in the Y, he can still get a lot of bingos down, ending in ING with common draws from the bag, such as AE, AI, EE, ER, and IT. This move is part of what makes Nigel so amazing, his ability to maximize every last bit of opportunity that his tiles allow. So from here, David responds by simply playing one of his two A's, perhaps suspecting that Nigel is indeed gunning for an ING bingo and preparing himself to respond with a bingo of his own through the open letters. Nigel then plays Yard for 54 points, cashing the setup and keeping his eye for next turn to play with potential XING words. David draws the blank on his one tile replenishment draw after AA -ah and plays Proteus. From here, David attempts to hold on to his small lead until he's saddled with three eyes in this position and is essentially forced to play Ictic, opening the board, after which Nigel bingos with Dithers using the second blank to take command in the game. When all is said and done, it's a 438 to 353 win for Nigel. After this tight tactical battle between the two legends, David still remained in first place with Nigel trailing him by a mere eight points of spread. With only five more rounds to go in the tournament, it was essentially a lock that the two of them would meet again to decide the outcome. And though I hate to leave you with a cliffhanger, it was a truly memorable finish, worthy of its own episode of Scrabble History.